Hi everybody, good morning. So this week we're doing Italian food and this is Monday. So for breakfast, I'm just going to have a pumpkin spice latte, sugar-free pumpkin spice latte. I'm eating so coffee for my breakfast. That's all I'm, that I'm having. So I'll see you guys for lunch, early lunch, earlier than what, I'm, what I've been usually eating. So I'll see you guys around lunch. Okay, everybody, so it is lunchtime. I am having lunch at noon, and this is what I'm having. So this is the quiche. Um, I have leftovers, so I need to eat this. So it's a quiche with a salad, the quiche Lorraine that we made um, Saturday. So I need to eat this because I have leftovers, so... Okay, everybody, so it is time to start making some dinner. So I have right here my butternut squash, which I'm going to be roasting. And with this, we're going to make two separate dishes. Uh, one we're going to make today, and the other one I'm going to save the uh, roasted um, butternut squash to make a soup, a creamy soup. But today we're making risotto. Butternut squash mushroom risotto. That is what we're going to be making today. So we're going to um, pair our chicken milanese with um, some roasted turnips. So that is the menu for today. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, everybody. So this is our butternut squash. It is going to, going to go in the oven. I don't have a sharp peeler, so I'm just going to roast it with the skin on. And then after it's cooked, I'll remove the skin. So they both have um, extra virgin olive oil, salt, pepper, um, thyme, and rosemary. This right here is a shallot, and this is a massive clove of garlic. Um, these two are going to go um, inside um, my butternut squash uh, soup, cream soup, or whatever. Uh, so yeah, so I'm going to put it in the oven, preheat it at 375 for... I don't know, 45 minutes? I'll let you guys know. Okay, for our fennel insalata, we're going to be use, needing uh, fennel, red onion, orange. I started peeling. I have to peel all the white spart parts. We're just going to be needing just the, uh, the inside, you know, the orange. Uh, salt, pepper, parsley, and uh, lemon juice or lime juice in my case. Okay, so this is the salad. So the fennel, you want to slice it as thin as possible. Same thing with the onion. So if you have a mandolin, you can do that with that. Super clean hands, just by the way. And the orange. So this has already salt, pepper, uh, lime juice, um, and um, extra virgin olive oil. So I'm going to go ahead and mix it. And then I'm going to put it in the fridge until the food is ready okay so here it goes it's in the pan we're gonna let it um cook for a few minutes and then we're gonna flip it for another minute and then we are done with the chicken it's looking so good all right so it's time to make our risotto so we're going to need butter around a tablespoon uh, mushrooms, shallots. I got a little bit of the roasted garlic because I don't have any fresh garlic. I thought I did, but I didn't. Uh, squash, white wine, some freshly grated Parmesan Reggiano, and the rice. I'm going to do one cup of rice, and I have the chicken stock on the stove, uh, and some basil to garnish. Okay, so so to the olive oil, we're adding half of a tablespoon of butter and we're going to be sauteing the um, onions and the mushrooms and the uh, roasted garlic. Okay, so it has been sauteing for a few minutes. Now I'm going to add the roasted garlic and the rice. And I'm going to toast the rice just a little bit and then we're going to start adding the liquids. Okay, everybody, so it's been toasted at medium heat for a little bit. Now, this is my first time making risotto ever. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add the wine, and we'll see how it turns out. I know you have to be patient and add the liquid little by little, um, so we'll see. Okay, wine is in. 
So we're going to be stirring this until the wine gets all evaporated and then we're going to start adding our hot um, chicken stock. Okay, so wine was evaporated and I added a little bit of the chicken stock. So I'm going to be doing this until it's nice and creamy and cooked. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more until everything is cooked and then I'll show you guys the end result. I need a better setup so you guys can see everything that I'm doing. Okay, so at this point we are almost done. The uh, rice is al dente according to uh, what I've read. That's how it has to be al dente. So I already added the other half of tablespoon of butter and my Parmesan cheese and pretty much we are done. Okay, so this is a risotto. So mine is, it didn't turn out as creamy as I was hoping or my only reference of risotto is the one from Olive Garden and I know that's not the real deal. Um, so I don't know if it's supposed to be like this or even creamier, but let's go ahead and try it. So this is our first course or our primo. So let's give it a try. Okay, so let's go ahead and give it a try. Now, if you guys are experts on making risotto, let me know if it's supposed to be like this or if it's supposed to be creamier. Like, did I add in my liquid too fast or is it supposed to cook longer? What I was reading is, the, is that um, it's supposed to be al dente, like pasta. It is al dente and this is definitely al dente. Or maybe I didn't add enough liquid. I'm not sure if it's supposed to look like this, but um, let me know in the comments down below, please. Ah. Mm. Mm. It tastes really good. It is al dente, like pasta. I don't know if it's too al dente or if it's, I don't know. I don't know. But I mean, I like the flavors. Okay, so this is the segundo with the ensalate. So we have our chicken milanese, the fennel salad, and the roasted turnips. Let's go ahead and give them a try. Alright everybody, let's go ahead and dig in. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Let's try the chicken milanese. Here we go. Hmm. So good. Some salate. Mm. So this is delicious and I'll see you guys either later on today or tomorrow. Bye. Okay, so it is Tuesday morning and we're having our coffee and this is a homemade um, pastry bread that my husband made. It's filled with um, pastry cream and a little bit like a, a paste, a sugary paste on top. It's really good. So this is what I'm having for breakfast. Okay, everybody, let's go ahead and have some lunch. So we are starting with an antipasto with some compressed salad, um, some prosciutto, I think it's salami, salami and cheese, some bread and some olives. This is uh, how we are starting our lunch. Okay, everybody, so we're going to eat our primo. And this is our risotto. I put more uh, Parmesan cheese on top so let's go ahead and give it a try i think i need to make a uh, risotto again um in one cup it's a lot of servings like a lot but this time that i'm going to make it um i think i'm gonna cook it for a little bit longer because i think it's maybe a little bit too al dente mm. mm -hmm. the flavor is really good though Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is all that I'm going to eat for lunch. I'll see you guys for dinner. Mm. 
Okay, everybody, so it is time to start dinner. I am going to be making our roasted butternut squash soup. And then uh, we're going to be eating some leftovers from yesterday, which is chicken mayonnaise with some of the uh, fennel salad. So the soup is going to be really simple. So I have here in my blender my roasted squash with some chicken stock, salt and pepper, and I'm just going to blend it, heat it up, and put a little bit of heavy cream, um, and that's it. So I'll show you guys the end results. Okay, so this is how our butternut squash soup is looking. Once it boils, then it's time to eat. Okay, everybody, so this is how the soup looks like. It is delicious. I added a little bit of heavy cream, and I'm going to have it with a piece of bread. And right here is my segundo. So let's go ahead and eat. Hey, everybody, so let's go ahead and try the soup. I know it's delicious. I already tried it. Yep. Yep. It's really good. Ooh. Mmm, you have your bread, you can dunk a little bit. Okay everybody, so for breakfast we are just having our coffee. Uh, super simple breakfast. Um, so that is what we're having today in my Halloween cup mug. Um, so yeah, that is what we're having. So I'll see you guys for lunch. Okay, everybody, so it is time to start making some lunch. So I'm going to make a classic, authentic um, carbonara, spaghetti carbonara. So we're going to be needing pancetta, parmesan cheese, egg, extra virgin olive oil, and spaghetti. So let's go ahead and make it. So while your um, pasta water is boiling, we're going to go ahead and brown our pancetta. And then um, afterwards, we're going to be adding the uh, spaghetti to the water and everything else. Okay, so this is one whole egg and three egg yolks and um, a quarter cup of uh, Parmesan cheese that we just grated. So this is going to be our sauce for our carbonara. Okay, everybody, so uh, to this, we're going to be adding a little bit of our pasta water to temper the sauce. Once our spaghetti is done, then we're going to go ahead and uh, put the uh, spaghetti in the pan with the pancetta, and then we're going to be adding the sauce, adding a little bit more of pasta water, and then we're done. Super simple. Okay, so we are pretty much done, and this is how it looks, so we're going to go ahead and serve, and that is it. Okay, so this is the uh, final product. I put a little bit of basil on top and a little bit of parm cheese and extra virgin olive oil. And this is how it looks. Let's go ahead and eat. Okay, everybody, it's so hot outside. It's like summer temperature, pretty much. So this is how it looks like. It is really simple to make. So it's my first time making this. Look at this. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Sorry, my door is open and my dogs are outside barking at who knows what. So let's go ahead and try it. Mmm. 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 Super simple dish, but so good. So, so good. So give it a try. 10 out of 10. I'm going to go ahead and finish this. And then I'm going to have some dessert. I have some mango and yogurt. So I think that's what I'm having for dessert. Okay, so this is what we're having for um, dessert. Some mango. Mm. Super sweet. Do you guys eat the skin? I do. Okay, so this is dinner. I'm going to have a compressed salad with some bread and some salami with some cheese and some olives. That is all for today. 
Okay, everybody, so for breakfast, I'm having toast with the um, dark chocolate spread and with some butter and jam, and then I have my coffee in the microwave. I am really missing savory um, breakfast, but let's go ahead and have this. Okay, everybody, so for lunch, we have leftovers risotto and some leftovers of the fennel and orange salad. So let's go ahead and eat. Hi, everybody, so the time has come to start dinner so we're going to make it's like a fish stew so it's like a poached fish i'm gonna put the name is aqua pasta uh so i'm gonna be making that with some toasted bread and then a very simple pasta which is just uh fresh tomatoes garlic shallots uh basil and parsley uh so let's go ahead and get started Okay, so let's go ahead and get this started. So an extra virgin olive oil, we're doing two shallots and two tomatoes. Now the recipe asks for cherry tomatoes. I don't have those, so I'm just using regular Roma tomatoes. Um, you should be adding garlic, fresh garlic. I thought I had for fresh um, garlic, but I guess I don't, so I don't know what to do in this case. Um, I might just add a little bit of um, garlic powder. But uh, fresh garlic for sure, but we're going to be sweating this for a little bit and then we're going to be adding the rest of the ingredients. Sorry about not having fresh garlic. Okay, so to this I'm going to go ahead and add uh, some wine, like a quarter cup of wine or around a quarter cup of wine. And once the alcohol gets reduced, then we're going to be adding our water that has sea salt and then our fish and capers okay so the water capers and the fish is in there now I'm going to put a little bit of tomatoes and the onions on, on top of the fish and then we're going to lower the heat to medium low and then cover this baby up and just let it simmer for about 15 to 20 minutes or until the fish is done and the sauce is reduced a little bit and then we're adding some parsley and that is it okay so we're going to be making a super simple sauce for our pasta so just shallots tomatoes garlic fresh garlic which I don't have an extra virgin olive oil I'm going to be sauteing this and cooking the uh, tomatoes until it becomes like a, a nice sauce and then I'm gonna put some spices and then the pasta and that's it okay so this is how it's looking I already tried it the sauce is delicious so I put a little bit of uh, parsley on top and this is how our sauce is looking is reducing very nicely so I'm just waiting for the uh, pasta water to boil so we can do some fettuccine and uh, yeah that I'm going to toast some bread and then we're going to eat Okay, so our sauce is looking really, really good. Um, I sprinkled um, a little bit of parsley and basil. And now we're just waiting for the pasta that is boiling and is getting cooked. And, um, and then after that, we're toasting the bread and then we're eating. Okay, so pasta is al dente. And I'm putting it into the sauce. And we're going to be tossing it until it's completely covered. And then I'm going to be add a little bit of pepper and and that is it. So basically everything is done. I'm just need to toast some bread and then let's go ahead and eat. Everything looks really good. Okay, so food is ready. Look at this. Oh my goodness. It looks delicious. So let's go ahead and try it. I'm just waiting for my bread to finish toasting. And then uh, we are good to eat. Okay, everybody. So let's go ahead and try it. Let's try the pasta first. And then we'll try the fish with the bread. Because my bread right now is super hot. So this is fettuccine with this very simple tomato sauce. Without fresh garlic. Can't believe. I cannot believe that I ran out of garlic. Like, what is this? I'll buy garlic today. Mmm. Mmm. 
Let me try the fish with tomato. Mmm, mmm, oh my god, this is so good. Mmm, the wine and the capers, it gives them like the perfect acidity. It does not need any lime or lemon juice or anything. Let me grab a piece of bread and soak it in the sauce. This is good. This is aqua. It's aqua pasta. Mm. Try it. Please try it. It's really, really good. So... I'm going to eat this and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. So I'm having some coffee and I have some bread toasting um, on my pan because I don't have a toaster. And I'm going to put the dark chocolate uh, seaweed butter. Seaweed butter. <laughs> Sunflower seed butter. Oh, my God. And then also I might just do strawberry as well. So yeah, this is what I'm having for breakfast. I'll see you guys for lunch. Hey everybody, we're starting our lunch. We're going to be making a simple tomato salad. So this is tomato, salt, pepper. I'm going to be adding basil and parsley and a little bit of lime juice. And for the pasta dish, for the pasta dish, I am making something that I saw on one of the uh, YouTube channels where she goes to her Nana's house and she was making something like this very simple extra virgin olive oil she will fry the onions and then throw in the pasta and add parmesan cheese salt and pepper parsley and uh, basil and that is basically it so i'll show you guys okay so my onions are looking nice and caramelized my pasta is still not done so i just lowered the heat i'm just waiting for my pasta to be done so that way we can finish this recipe Okay, so pasta is done. I just put it into the pan and I already added the herbs. So it's almost done. I'm going to be adding um, like a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. And it is time to serve. So that is it. This is it. Let's go ahead and try it. Alright everybody, it's so hot outside. It's almost 90 degrees and it's supposed to be full already, but nope. So this is how the pasta is looking, super simple, and so it's, I've made enough for my husband and I, and this is the salad, super simple for both of us. So let's go ahead, I'm going to be serving myself a little bit of salad on the side of my pasta. So let's go ahead and give this a try. It's super hot because it just came out of the uh, pan. Look at the caramelized onions, the herbs, the cheese, extra virgin olive oil. It looks unbelievable. It tastes really good. Mm. <laughs> so, I'm going to finish this. Start cleaning and start prepping for dinner because what I'm going to be making um, today, hopefully today, is going to be in the oven for like two hours. So yeah, I'll see you guys at dinner. Okay, so we didn't have breakfast. We went straight to lunch and we went to an American diner and I had the most Italian thing they had, which was a bean um, soup and also a, what they called lasagna. It was, it was okay. Um, and some onion rings. I didn't eat the bread and that is basically what I had Okay, everybody, so we're going to start with an oso buco. I'm going to boil potatoes so that way I can peel them and then I'll show you guys what's next Okay, so besides our tomato, this is what we're going to be needing We're going to be needing a whole onion chopped if you want to chop them smaller You can do that. I do like my sauce to have more texture. So I did dice them um I guess not too small, but not like huge. And then two carrots and two celery sticks. 
Okay, so here are my tomatoes that I boil so that way um, it's easier for the skin to be removed. Now with super clean hands, we're going to crush them. Now these are um, these just came out of the pot, so they're really hot. I'm going to wait for them to cool a little bit, and then I'm going to crush them with my hands. And then we're going to start with the sauce, making the dish. Alright everybody, so we have our beef shanks that have been salted and peppered and also floured. Now we're going to be browning these um, on all sides. And then after that we're adding all the, we're sautéing all the vegetables. We're also going to be needing um, tomato sauce. Okay, so meat is getting browned on all sides. It look, it's looking really, really good. And then on the sim oil, we're going to be sautéing all the vegetables until they're nice and soft. Okay, so those veggies are getting nice and soft and we're going to be adding now five cloves of garlic just like that because it's going to be um, going into the oven for so many hours. Um, so just like that. Okay, so the veggies are looking nice and um, soft. Now we're going to be adding white wine, like about half a cup. Or maybe a little bit more you never know and then we're going to let this simmer the alcohol to cook off and then um, we'll be adding the rest okay now to this we're going to be adding our hand crushed tomatoes and also a small can of tomato sauce and the aromatics which is thyme, rosemary and bay leaves now we're going to add the meat back inside and then and then after that some beef stock all right so the meat is back in there now we're going to be adding like around two cups of beef beef broth if you make your own that's awesome i just buy mine low sodium until it kind of covers the meat and then it's going to go in the oven okay now it's that's enough and now it's, it's going to go in the oven for a few hours i'll let you guys know okay baby's going in the oven at 350 for about two hours i'll let you guys know Okay, so it's time to make the polenta. So we're going to boil four cups of um, chicken broth and I'm going to make one cup. I'm going to put in one cup of um, polenta. Okay, so our broth, it is boiling. Now we're going to lower the heat um, and we're going to be starting to add the polenta little by little and we're going to be whisking it. Okay, so now the polenta is in. We're going to be stirring it very often. Now, you don't want it to be like in a hard boil because if this splashes on you, it will burn you, just like mashed potatoes. So, it's going, it, right now it's on low, and we're going to be doing this for about 20 minutes until it's like nice and creamy and done. It's getting thick. So we're going to continue to do this, and then we're going to be adding some uh, Parmesan cheese and a little bit of butter. Okay, everybody, voice over time. So I did added Parmesan cheese and butter, and it became really nice and creamy and cheesy. It, it was really, really good. Look at that texture. That is exactly what you're looking for. So the polenta was really, really good. And this is the osobuco. I did end up trimming the fat that you see on top, but it was delicious. And this was the end result when I plated my dinner. The meat was falling off the bone. The polenta was super creamy. It was super rich. You guys definitely have to give this a try. And stay tuned for next week, which we're doing Slovenian and Croatian food.